Well, I was born in Antigua, a very little small village, um, and went to uh, the village school, passed my 11 plus, and then I went to a school in town. It's called the Princess Margaret School. It was a very new school at that time. We were taught more about England and the Queen, you know, and the Empire than we did about Antigua. I really knew nothing about Antigua. Schools even were named after, you know, British monarchy. Um, and we were taught quite a lot about that. And, you know, I think quite a lot of people wanted to come to England because they felt part of it. You definitely felt there were more opportunity, you know, in England. And, you know, and you felt that you would be welcomed and, you know, indeed, you know, they would really want you there. Um, everyone did. Well, in Antigua, um, my mother was um, head teacher. I was fine. They didn't want me to come to England at all. They thought I had gone mad. But I said, yes, I really want to come to England. And so most all of the young people who had just finished their school cert came to England. The adults talked about it as if, you know, it was the most important place to be. And the children, obviously, I was a ch young child then, and you sort of listened in, you know, and everyone sort of aspired, really, to, to come to England. I came here in October 1961. I'd left school four years prior to that. I was a teacher in Antigua. I had to apply to the Antigua committee so that they would interview me, see what all about me, and decide if I am, if I was good enough to come. My dad sort of came over in the early late 50s, yeah, because I was about five when he came to England. I don't remember very much about that. Well, my father was skilled. He was a carpenter, so he was skilled. He did skilled work, you know, making furniture. I think he came over um, by boat, because that was the main way of traveling, you know, at that time. The day that I was coming to England, my pastor, or we called him pastor, but you called him our priest, he came to the plane, on the plane with me, and sat with me, persuading me not to come to England. And I told him I had made up my mind and I am going. So he had to get off the plane and go <laughs> without me. It was really quite um, traumatic in a way because I didn't really want to leave. You know, clearly you're going from somewhere you're happy and you know to somewhere that you didn't know when it, I didn't know what to expect. So I didn't want to go, but I didn't have a choice as my father was here and my mother clearly was wanted to come. Commissioner of Students met me at the airport and there were four of us coming from Antigua. He met us at the airport, Heathrow, then sent us to Luton and Dunstable Hospital where the tutors met us when we got there. But when we came, we lived in a, it's a, it's a house occupied by, I think, three families and we were at the top, on the top floor. Um, so, you know, we were sharing everything, you know, bathroom, you know, all the amenities. And um, we had one front door and then you just go to your, you know, your, you know, uh, respective place, either downstairs, in the middle or upstairs. There were three families there. 
One family, they were Africans, and they live in on the middle floor. And another family was English, and they lived on the ground floor, and we lived on the top floor. Everybody lived very amicably, you know, we never fell out or anything like that. We all got on very well, and I used to babysit. The African family had a little boy, and I used to babysit, you know, for the little boy, um, you know, after school, until you know, their parents came home. So we all got on very well. I had a friend who went to London to live and the landlady she came into her room one day and said, you must leave today. Get out of this house. I don't want you here. Where is she going? She had to go back into the nursing home nurses' quarters to live, so otherwise they just put your things outside. It was winter. And I really could not believe how cold it was. Freezing. And I've never experienced cold like that before. So I didn't want to go out at all, really. Because you hear it's winter, but you don't think of it as being like that because you've never been in winter. But it was very cold. Anyway, my mother had bought me this wonderful coat from someone who was selling it second hand. I had the coat to put on so that it wasn't so horrible after all. I remember going with my father to get a winter coat, you know, which was quite an experience because I, you know, I never had a coat before. So I found it quite, you know, difficult to choose one. I don't think I did in the end, <laughs> you know. So my father just bought one and brought that home, so I had that. Going to school in England, you know, that was quite a shock, you know, having things like sago and tapioca and I've never heard of it, you know. So that was quite, quite new to me. I said, I cannot understand how is it that they don't, they cook roast potato, fried potato, chipped potato, cr what's happened to all the other food? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, there's no rice, there's nothing, what happened? From spice to bland, <laughs> that's it, you know, I mean, I never had things like, you know, custard and, you know, um, rice pudding and things like that. To me, rice was savoury. You know, I've never, never realised you could have it bland, you know, as a dessert. So that was the main difference in that we tend to use spices and herbs quite a lot. And um, the British, I mean, they're doing more now. But certainly when I was growing up, you know, it just didn't happen. I went to a girls' school in, in, Is, in Islington, uh, did fairly well <laughs> and decided to, I didn't want to go to university, I decided to do my nursing training. I'm a state registered nurse and then in those days once you become a state registered nurse, most of us go off and do our midwifery. I did my training at the Royal Free Hospital. At that time, it was at King's Cross before the new hospital in Pond Street in Hampstead. So I did my three-year training there um, and then decided I'd like to be a midwife and went to Edinburgh to be a midwife. It was quite away from home. I've never been away from my, from my family before. But it was really quite lovely, you know, the Scots were really very welcoming, very friendly. 
And um, I often had my Sunday lunch, you know, with families um, because, you know, I was away from home. They were really very kind. Over my career, I think I have delivered about seven or eight hundred babies. Because in my first six months as a student, I delivered a hundred. We were that busy in Manchester. Delivering babies, even as a student midwife in 75, you know, up until, you know, my late career. So, you know, I would think that I've managed to deliver a few hundred babies, really. When I worked in the hospital um, in Stevenage here, there's only one one patient that came in with her husband and the husband came to me and he said I do not want any black people looking after my wife so I said well I don't know what you're going to do about this but what I'm going to say to you is the consultant is black the doctor is black here I am in charge of the hospital. The only person that's here is a student nurse. And she cannot look after your wife without one of us. So what are you going to do? Well, he didn't come back to me. I mean, I went off due to the morning. He was still there, the wife hadn't delivered, so. Most of my working life, I have been a midwife and, you know, and for the last 30 years, a uh, midwifery lecturer. Um, I, I do, I, I, I'm involved in writing books, so I do, you know, write midwifery texts, you know. Um, I'm in the process of writing a chapter now for, you know, a midwifery book on, you know, um, complicated or social problems, so I'm doing that at the moment. I have got two children, my daughter, who um, I sent her to St. Francis in Letchworth. She did quite well there and finishing university, she's a microbiologist. My son, he went to Cambridge to, to do his A-levels, finish them, and he is now a consultant in IT. My daughter is an accountant. You know, so that's her profession. So she she didn't really do any. She didn't do nursing or anything, you know, in the medical profession. So I worked quite hard with the children and my husband. We worked very hard with the um, homework at night and see that they're all right and it's done properly. So didn't go out dancing, etc. It was time for work and. That was it. I always sort of see myself as West Indian, you know, and even after all these years here, you know, I still see myself as West Indian, probably more British um, than I did in the, in the past. Um, it's quite difficult, you know, to explain you know, but, you know, I've lived really, not only in England, but Scotland. I've lived in, no, my husband was from the north of England, so I spent a lot of years there, Germany. So I've had quite a mix of cultures, you know, really, it clearly dilutes your own culture. So, I mean, I feel I fit in, really, in lots of different cultures. Um, 
And I think that's probably the best way to, to live. I'm British. I'm British. Antigua belongs to England anyway. Or it was. It used to. Yes, I spent 58 years here. Oh dear me.